Good morning, boys and girls. It's uh, Saturday morning in August, Texas. And uh, I just wanted to go fishing a little bit. And I wanted to go somewhere where I really don't have any experience. And I decided to come over here to Lake Athens. It's, uh, I've only, I think I've been on Lake Athens one or two days in my life. But, you know, I hear sporadic reports from over here. And it's always that the fishing's good. Uh, you know, it's a deep, clear lake. It's where the, uh, the hatchery is down here. I know there's been some great big ones released in there. I was surprised to see the lake record's only 14 pounds and change, but you know, it's less than 2,000 acres. It's not a real big lake. And uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna go fish and see what happens. So uh, here it is right here, actually I'll show you. A lot of boats in the parking lot, holy cow. Lake Athens. No fishing from the bridge. You know, I might just see if there's somebody standing around here bank fishing or something that might want to go fishing with me. Let's just see. Well, here's a guy here. Are hey, you looking to go fishing? You know anybody that's got a boat? I got one. I'm by myself. Are you? Well, hey, need a rider? <laughs> Good morning, Ken. Check out the uh, the brim bed right there in front of the boat. And Kelly just said something to me I did not know because I made a comment. Well, you can see them right there. You can see the fish moving on top of those. And I said, I can't imagine they're spawning. But what did you just say? Uh, these are bluegill, and they are on their bed. And uh, they spawn all summer. That's why bluegill are such great forage fish, especially in ponds and lakes, because they spawn all summer. Whereas, like shell crackers and green sunfish, whatever spawn one time and are done, kind of like bass. Uh -huh. Bluegill will stay on their beds all summer long. So they just reproduce they and spawn reproduce. And spawn and spawn. That's why everybody says to stock bluegill in your ponds. Everybody stocks the copper nose because they're bigger. They're like Florida strain mm -hmm. bluegill. But bluegill are God. such a great bass forage because. They're very prolific and they spawn all summer and you find a little bed like that. That is better than a brush pile. And that's actually pretty dang deep. We're sitting yeah. in 10 feet of water yeah, and it's, it's to our right. Yeah, there's going to be a, we might catch a little dawn off that. I better throw something over there on top yeah, of that. Yeah, hey, he shoots, he scores, he's a bat. I told you I saw him down there. Hey, there you go. Live scope all day, right? Yeah, Jordan called it a shot. No, I called your shot. I said, hey, Ken, this fish is going to be a shot. This one thinks he's going to go. Oh, yeah. And you know what Ken says is, hey, I'm going to get out the drop shot. I said, there's grass there. He said, I don't care. I can catch one on it. And his first cast, I sat down to tie on a 10 inch worm, you know. And I'm throwing a four inch. I'm throwing a five inch worm on bit part And off. when he lands this bass in 17 minutes from now, yeah. comes a spinner rod. But I'm in. definitely not Jacob Wheeler in this one where you just roll them up and swing them in. Hey, but it's pretty fun though. Oh, I love it. I there's, love it. There's several major, I guess this water, they just drop down in this ditch right here. That's what, you know, typical. We know how that goes down. We've seen that about five billion times, right? A whole bunch of times. That's what they do. Hey, well, this little old fish is not giving up. Well, these fish are like Lake Fork, these fish used to be. They fight and fight and fight. And well, these fish aren't tired strong. of getting caught like the ones at Rayburn. This guy here, he's like, man, I ain't been caught in three years. <laughs> they get a lot of pressure here too, but they have a tremendous population. Let's see if I can do this. Nice little chunk. I mean. This camera's about to die up here, but that is a solid little old What'd you call that? Three and a half? Oh yeah. Solid three and a half. Maybe a little more than that. Good fish. A little drop and chop fish. Yeah. Got a little spot on his tail. Pretty fish. Summertime. Sort of. Summertime grass fish on Lake Athens. Too much fun. Yeah. Kelly actually called the shot on that. Uh, so this is a flat. It's a big flat. It's got pads on either side of it. And these guys who have put this, I don't know, $30,000 boat dock, do you think? 
they came in here and they're doing another one right over here they've dug a channel out to their dock so through this five foot fat flat we're sitting in an eight foot channel and kelly saw a fish moving on top of the grass out here which is what do you think that grass probably is millfold or you yeah, think that's millfold. and i picked up my little dropping shot and thunk thunk too much fun oh, baby. oh yeah it's died down because they all would, you know, mamas would call, my son's the next time they have hands. Like, uh, ma'am. It's on. Ooh. Oh, there's a frog and you're staying in the ditch, which is where I should be, but I pick up scrap. Front end in an FL or MFL Pro. Thank you very much. I had just missed one. Oops, the camera's messed up. I had just missed one back there. Ate my tail off. Ate my tail off. But I saw that fish back there. It was a two plus pound fish, but that's just another quality fish. And we are 40 yards from where I caught that last fish. So that one came on a little swimming bait with a swing head, swing spinner. I actually heard that fish say, gimme, gimme, gimme. Did you hear that? <laughs> right before he got it, he said, gimme, 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 gimme. Hold down, save us from the sea wall. Banging my mercury on the seawall back here. I'm not done. Kelly Jordan. Save my mercury, honey. Man, and I'm still trying to force feed one of this frog. I'm like, come on, babies. I haven't even had a. I don't even think I've had a dragonfly try to land on my frog. That's bad. That's off. That's off frog fishing when yeah. the dragonflies won't get on it. I know. I'm about to have to retire the frog. No dirt dauber action, nothing. Not even a swirl. No, he, uh -oh. no you don't know the story. Is he? You know, he ain't caught until you put him in the boat. He was on the left. Oh, he's caught. And I'll make you sit down if you drop him off here. Maybe I'll just release him so you can be happy. But so, see the one way side? He's uh -huh. to the left of the one way side. So you, he was on the wrong side of the one so, way side? So when he first bit, he was to the right where it's pointing, and then he must have known it. So I put right. him to the left side, and he smoked on the way down. Hey, the red shed worm, finally. I love you some red shed. Yeah, we're just going old school. But old I got school. to I got to reel down and bow up, set the hook. I really enjoyed it. Oh, I had one take my worm. Yeah, they're biting. Oh, I didn't get it. Look at, look at, where's my, yeah. why's my hey, line going him, sideways? Yeah, go ahead, pull on that one. Oh, look at this Son. one now. Hey, I think I got him. He's on my line, not yours. It's <laughs> in the middle of the I'm clear. I am on the big fish now. Hey, you know the good thing about that? Ken? I got him out of your way. No. That's a keeper on this leg. You got you a keeper. Is it really? We're on the board. Is this a slot? slot leg. Oh, oh, golly. Oh, that's too many. You got to say. Hey, I better hurry up. I guess if you're, Ken's in the penalty if box. you're fishing with one of the yeah, guys who runs Major minutes. League you, Fishing. You got to sit down. You can't rehook your bait or anything. All you just right. got to sit down and shut up. So here's my well, question. don't have to shut up. I here's my Major League question rules. <laughs> if you're in your break. Oh, man, there's a school. That must be the one you just had. If you're in your two minutes, can you pee? Did you get my tail? Uh, no. No. What do you really, really got to go? If you well, can, you they, delay they your go two minutes. They would stop the deal and then they'd restart again. I mean, you can't do anything that see because that would be giving you an advantage because it would take time out of your normal fishing time that you would do that. See what I'm saying? Like drinking the water, getting yeah. a snack, tying a bait on. So you can't even drink water while you're sitting there. Damn, y'all are cold. Hey, man. That's hardcore. Fish. 
That fish is eating good. He eating like me. We I eat? think he's eating better than you, Ken. Yeah, no Coming up behind you. That is right there, ladies and gentlemen. Or because he said if I caught one on that fish, he'd give me a dollar. Yeah, I do. I'll get a dollar. Woohoo! I'm gonna frame that dollar bill. It's a nice, healthy summer fish. I mean, there's nothing unhealthy. That fish is every bit of five pounds. Legs full of them like that. Golly. Worm went down there and it went to toke. That's the best. I saw you go on point, reel down and spin the hook. That's the best. Thing. What frog are you throwing? Six foot. That's not all I throw anymore. I'm not going to throw He doesn't make the. All of his frogs. Out of the back of the boat. Oh, look out. Oh, that's two minutes. That was an incidental tail touch. It's a dental on nothing. You one hoppy. Everybody home. Y'all be the judge, but I'm pretty sure you're going to try to claim big fish. Y'all be the judge. Wow. All right, guys. Y'all can uh, y'all can comment on the bottom. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a two it's, pounds bigger. Oh, yeah. oh, really? Huh. Wow. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like fish with Ike and Oh, yeah. right as it dies. <laughs> All right, boys. So, uh, Mr. Jordan took me out to try to catch some of his pets today. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we tried to run the school of bass. We really didn't catch them very good. I mean, we were laughing. We probably had best five. And we, we probably pushed 20 pounds. Yeah, but yeah, for the expectations out here when they go and then the amount of fish that we saw in schooling. Yeah, we had one group, and I, I don't think we got it on camera. We had one group come up. There were 40 or 50 fish for 30 seconds. We weren't ready. It was the first group of fish we saw. <laughs> they were all two to I don't know how big. I mean, right. there were some five and six pounders yes, in them. absolutely. And when I say schooling, I mean knocking, jumping out of the water, acting stupid schooling. Whole fish coming out of the yeah, water. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we're going to do this again. You think, so we had a bunch of rain, four or five inches of rain. Two days ago. Two days ago. The lake, you can see the lake is full completely to the brim. It's right up to the bottom of the boat docks. You'll see that on some of the footage you saw a minute ago. But There's a lot more color in the main lake. Some of the areas were downright, you know, dirty. And the, and the visibility for the schooling fish, you know, the more visibility, the better. And the, we went to the back of some of the pockets and some of the creeks, and they were very off color. So 
it just you know it takes a little while, a couple days you know maybe a week to settle down and when it does it slides out but uh it's it's one of the better lakes to fish in the early fall like in september and early october when everywhere else is you know really fishing tough lake athens is still a fun place to fish and they usually school like crazy you just chase them around it's like white bass fishing except way more fun and a lot bigger fish yeah we'll do this again hey walk the guys through we were talking earlier because i don't know so with major league fishing Bass Pro Tour is on top, and next year, or this year, there's 76 guys. On the Bass Pro Tour? Yes. yes. And then four guys who get to qualify for each tournament from a prior... Pro Circuit event. Pro Circuit event. Did this year. So Pro Circuit event is the old FLW Tour. Yes. And that's going to be limited to what, 150, you think, next year? I think so, yeah. Okay. So you go... BFLs, you can get, which pr pretty much you can get to the Toyota Series. Yeah. Anybody can. Top five out of each division, I believe. Right. From each Toyota division qualify for the Pro Circuit. And then uh, requalifiers from the Pro Circuit. So the way it all meshes up, there's a lot of, I think maybe only 70 automatically requalify, or maybe 75 from the Pro Circuit next year. Then you have, I think, seven divisions of five, so that's 35 from the uh, Toyota Series, and then there's places for the Bass Pro Tour um, guys to fish. Because those guys can drop down to mm -hmm. fish if they yeah, want to. Yeah, absolutely, because it qualifies for them. Right. It's kind of like fishing opens if you right. fish in the yep. Series, same yep. thing. In case you don't make it right. the next year, or but, you're just trying to win a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, and that's the way it is on the, on, the, on the piece of paper. But, you know, typically there's a lot of declines. Maybe not all the Toyota guys come up. You don't ever know what's going to fall out. To well, you had two or three guys out on medical leave this year, right? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard to say, but, yeah, that's how it works. And then the top ten in the Pro Circuit every year, uh, qualifying for the Bass Pro Tour. And Thanks. one of our, we were talking as we fished today, one of both of our good buddies, Jim Tut, just just barely missed qualifying. He was in there and I was like, my goodness, he's in like sixth place and then he just had a, a medium last tournament and he got passed bad. And yeah. I just heard because Jim is such a great guy. Well, you know, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag on him a little bit. We, uh, we talked two years ago when he was trying to qualify for the Force Wood Cup. And we, we talked quite a bit. And he told me the other day this made a difference to him. I climbed on him and I said, why are you trying to make the FLW Cup? He goes, what do you mean? And I said, you're a way better fisherman than that. I said, you should be trying to win Angler of the Year. And he said he kind of took that to heart and kind of started thinking about it and started thinking about how he used to think about fishing versus how he does now. And he said, I, he, he told me, he said, I got to credit you with that. He made me kind of stop, step back and think. Well, whatever you did work, he had a great year. You got to set your season. goals for what you really want. Yeah, absolutely. You can't settle for your goals. And Jim's way too good a fisherman to be trying to make top 40. He's yeah. He should be trying to win angle of the year. So I was proud of him and I think he'll do even better next year. Yeah, absolutely. He also said, interesting to me, you guys cut him to two days of practice. And he said he feels like he fished better because it made him fish more instinctively. Yeah. Welcome to our world. There's yeah. a lot of guys that want, seriously want no practice. Andy. Because they get in trouble. They find something and, you know, and relating to, you know, people at home that, that fish weekend tournaments, you know, how many times have you fished a weekend tournament? You go practice the weekend before. Man, I'm on them. And that's what you have to go by the following Saturday. And you catch nothing and you wonder, what the heck happened? Did they move? If you hadn't fished at all, you surely would have done better than you did. Not always the case. Sometimes you're still yep, there, yep. but it just allows you to fish pure and instinctively, and it's just a lot more fun. You see, go get it. You know, one of the things I've been challenged with when I fish multiple day events that I don't know how you guys do is I'll fish if I fish ten spots day one, and I catch fish on five of them, I'll fish six spots on day two, and I don't expand, and that's the key to that, and and that's part of that practice thing too, right? I mean, you wind up sitting protecting a spot in practice when you should just keep practicing. Yeah, and you know, there's no trying, you know, there's no set answer, but the answer is what the answer should have been at the end, if that makes sense. You never know. It's best just to do the best you can, move as much as you can, and you still have to make decisions, and that's why we always say in pro fishing, it's all about the decisions it's you make. 100% about. 100% about your decisions. You know when you made a bad one. And then on the multiple day events, at the end of the tournament the guys who rise to the top you talk to them all and they're like man i really have them dialed in right now because they have fished them hard every day which you don't do in practice right you figure or out you exactly shouldn't. why they're doing what they're doing and whatever and that's how guys continue to make adjustments and that's how come sometimes in the finals of an event you see guys just forevermore whack them because they have them dialed yeah. and then 
hey, it goes away sometimes too, and the guys are too hard-headed to move. They fall down or something happens. You know, everybody can have some bad stuff happen to their fish quit, but um, then you wonder, man, I wish I had done this now. I should have adjusted. Just like poker too. You got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. That's right. So that's, uh, put that all in a box, shake it up, and that's how you, you know, hopefully make the best decisions you can make and uh, all boys down to catching the most fish and having the most fun doing it. And that's where success comes from. Well, I had a ball today and I will say the highlight of the day was my fish tacos at lunch. <laughs> There's a restaurant right there called the Boathouse. And he and actually your wife was gonna come join us. And you told me he said, Wait, you're gonna love this place. Yes, it's fantastic. We yes. had ceviche for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I said that right. I don't but, either, but it's really good. It's shrimp yeah, and some other stuff. Holy, like it was some, so good. I know it's uh <laughs> And you can pull your boat right up to the shoreline, walk right up there, and there you go. It's a great, yeah, great, yeah. Break see the boat in the water. It was nice. So, well, I'm so glad Kelly and I reconnected. We had not been around each other. We actually bumped into each other at the Bass Cat, the owners, uh, the uh, not the owners, the, the, dealer, the dealer, dealer, dealer meeting. Me. And so uh, you guys are going to see Kelly with me out here again. We're going to come back here. He's investigating another lake that he's not going to tell us about yet. Oh, no, that lake's we, off we, limits. We just talked to John, uh, the of Strike King, John, John, ba Barnes. John Barnes, and I think they're going to sneak down to another lake. And I'm going to tell you right now, if they catch some grass flipping like I think I am, we're going to go grass flipping here in the next few weeks. So <laughs> we're going to put it on trailer and go back to Dallas, but I enjoyed it. I did Thanks too. for Thank fishing you with me, man. Appreciate it. A lot of fun. See if we've ever between us, we should be able to get a boat on a trailer. I think. I hope so.